Hi, Patrick Fister, Principal Trombonist of the Omaha Symphony, here to talk to you about tone. While tone is an extremely important aspect for every instrument and musician, it is perhaps the trombone's best calling card, for we are the brass instrument that most closely mimics the human voice. Added to that is that we are, generally speaking, the least virtuosic of the brass instruments, but also perhaps the loudest. That means that when we do get the opportunity to have a melody within an ensemble, that we will likely be playing something both relatively simple, but also loud. Nothing will make a conductor give the hand faster than a blaring trombone with poor tone. So let's talk about how to make a great tone. Now, the absolute first thing we must do is know what a good sound on our instrument is. That means listening, listening to great trombonists. They can be classical soloists like Alain Trudel, Achilles Lermacopoulos with the Canadian Brass, Mark Hetzler, my teacher, Christian Lindbergh, Joseph Alessi, or it could be jazz artists like J.J. Johnson, Alan Kaplan, Michael Davis, or Marshall Jilks, to name but a few. With that sound image in your head, you'll have a much clearer idea of what you're aiming for. pretty good. So now that we've heard some fantastic sounds from the trombone, it's time to imitate that. But how? Brass pedagogue legend Arnold Jacobs would largely say that simply by hearing the tone in your head, your body will compute how to make that happen. This is to say that we must get out of our own way as much as possible. One of my teachers frequently reminded us that we are wind instruments, not lip instruments. Therefore, we make our best tone by sitting up or standing up straight taking in a breath that fills our chest in all directions. Not just up high, like a little talking breath. And not down on our stomach. We don't need to distend our stomach outwards, trying to fill up lungs that aren't down there. Just, and then exhaling with as little interference from our body. So. Now, you may have already figured out that you can start a note without tonguing. By blowing air at a specific rate or speed, our lips will sympathetically resonate. As we progress, the idea is to use the air as much as possible for this control, just as a singer would, so that our lips, throat, chest, and tongue don't have to be as involved. The more we try, the more tension we will have, and our tone will suffer. Now, for example. <sighs> Playing that on the horn, again, starting the note with no tongue, just In my opinion, the best way of achieving this relaxed airflow is to always take a slow, deep, relaxed breath before every entrance. For example, if you have an eight measure rest before you enter, Make sure you have your horn up in plenty of time. If it's an allegro, perhaps four bars, but at least two bars at a time. And again, if it's an allegro, one, two, three, four, I'm going to give myself an entire bar to get a good breath. So one, two, three, four. And then perhaps if it's a lento or an adagio, I might give myself two beats. So one, two, Essentially, the air wants to go out in the same way that it came in. So if we can give ourselves time to take a slow, deep, relaxed breath, we'll exhale in the same relaxed manner, thus producing a beautiful tone. To recap, listen to great trombonists, try to imitate the way they sound, get your horn up with plenty of time to take a full, relaxed breath, and exhale in the same relaxed manner. I'm going to leave you with an excerpt from Wagner's Tannhauser Overture, demonstrating the trombone's wonderful power and tone. Thanks for watching and happy practicing.